In my last video, I spent 100 days in master mode, and it was now time to take it one step further. So in this video, I spent 100 days in Terraria Calamity mod, and here's what happened. This is my first time ever playing modded Terraria, and I jumped in completely blind to all the new bosses and mechanics. I chose to play Revengeance mode, this means that all the bosses and enemies have increased mechanics and difficulty. Anyways, sit back, relax, and enjoy this one and a half hour long Terraria movie. Alright, so I started off day 1 by enabling revengeance mode. I then noticed the starter bag I was given, uh, which gave me tons of weapons and potions that would come in handy. I then did the usual by committing serious deforestation. After getting enough wood, I started exploring the right side of the world, and then I found a crimson biome. Eventually I moved further and I found this ball jumping around, and it absolutely destroyed me. I was hoping I had better luck exploring the left side of the world, but it was much much worse. Since the sun was going down, I decided to give up exploring and start building a little base. I also upgraded my sword before heading further down the caves. Eventually I found a small little cave which contained a chest. I opened the chest and found my first accessories, which were the climbing claws. It was night time once again, and I was not prepared. I then built this small little shack in order to keep the zombies out, but even that didn't quite work. I died a ton, but I did manage to get some amethyst and lead at least. It was now day 2 and I can make myself an anvil with the lead I got. This also meant that I can make myself a piece of armor and a grappling hook. I then went to explore further off the left side once again and I found this aglet in this chest. When I left the cave again I found this perforator cyst that had spawned and luckily for me I died before I managed to kill it. Even in moments where I thought I was safe, uh, I really wasn't. Finally I managed not to get killed and I found my first golden chest which contained the lucky horseshoe. Not long afterwards I found my first life crystal as well as a golden chest which contained the hermes boots. I did explore further down the caves and eventually I did die, however I had managed to get a lot of ores. As a result I made myself a gold broadsword. The next day I used a gravitation potion in order to try and find some floating islands. I then stumbled across these floating balls. I then went on to explore further and then I came across this huge laboratory right above my house. I saw that there were some sentry gunners watching me, so I didn't really dare to go inside, but I did manage to steal this power cell factory. Eventually I did find a floating island I was looking for, and inside the chest I found a red balloon. There was also this yellow ore outside that I tried to mine, but I couldn't. I then stumbled upon this floating beehive uh, with the chest inside, but before I could reach it, I died. It was then time to start reinforcing the base a little bit, uh, and also making a couple of NPC houses. When I was done with that, I went down in the caves to explore again and I came across this new biome. I also found another one of those laboratories, uh, but I died. I then decided to explore some more of the left side of the world and I came across this hole going directly down, so I followed it down and found this shrine. Inside the chest I found this cool accessory called the Trinket of Chi. I ventured further to the left side and eventually I stumbled across the dungeon with the old man. I went even further and stumbled across this new biome that did not seem friendly. When I returned home, I made myself some new tools as well as another piece of armor. I then found this rigged chest uh, and I thought I removed all of the dynamite, but I didn't. I found an underground railway which led me to this huge mushroom uh, which had a chest containing an uh, interesting accessory. Once again, I got absolutely blasted by a rigged chest, but I headed back and found a magic mirror. Other than that, I did the usual by finding a couple of life crystals and some more ore. I had found enough gold to make myself a full set of gold armor, which just made me look like a complete moron. 
I went down again and found Tim the wizard and I killed him, took his hat and I looked a little bit better. He also dropped his plasma rod uh, which to be honest completely sucked. I then headed down to the crimson to blow up some of the crimson hearts. This dropped the undertaker which is a somewhat decent gun. I explored further to the right side and I found this huge beehive uh, in the jungle uh, which contained a life crystal as well. Eventually I moved all the way to the right side of the world and I found the angler. I opened one of the chests in the ocean and I found this shark pet. I made my way all the way down to hell and I was really not prepared for it. I noticed that all of my housing was now occupied by a different NPC so I had to expand. On day 6 I once again found a perforator cyst and this nasty ass thing spawned. And as you can see I was nowhere close to killing it. I then made myself this hat and goggles which looked kinda cool. I returned to the crimson uh, with a little bit more preparation and tried once again to kill the perforator hive. Since that didn't go as planned I then tried to summon the brain of Cthulhu. I actually almost managed to kill him but this last phase was just so chaotic. I figured I needed some more preparations before killing the brain of Cthulhu so I headed down to the caves to find more life crystals. A little bit after that I got the message that I could feel an evil presence watching me which made me hurry back to try and make an arena. And not long after that I have Cthulhu spawned. I probably could have managed to kill him, but I just didn't have the mobility enough. I then sold some of my sapphires in order to afford a mini shark. I then did some more preparations before the brain of Cthulhu. I also headed down to make a summoning item so I could fight them easier. Once again, I got them fairly low, but that last phase is just so chaotic, so eventually I died. I went to the jungle and I found a couple of life crystals, as well as some chests with some accessories that could help me with mobility. I also found a couple of other accessories that would come in handy in the future. Exploring the jungle really paid off as I had now almost full HP. I then found an underground mushroom biome uh, which had a shroom minecart which is pretty nice. When I got back I made myself a blade of grass which was just absolutely massive. I then decided to expand the base a little bit more because it was kinda cramped. On day 10 I explored the underground desert biome where I found the last life crystal I needed. Eventually I found a chest which contained the desert medallion which I could use to summon the desert scourge. I really didn't know what to expect when I used the medallion as I summoned it just right there and then. And you can take a wild guess how you think this went. However, I didn't give up, I returned to the desert as the sun was going down and I made myself a little arena. And just like that, the very first boss of many bosses was killed.
Even though I managed to kill the Desert Scourge, I still had unfinished business that night. By using the mini shark and another weapon I got from the Death Scourge, uh, it made the fight much much easier. So, as day 10 was coming to an end, I had now defeated two bosses. And as I was organizing my chest the very next day, I got a message that a goblin army was approaching. It didn't seem to be anything different with the goblin army, so it was just a pretty easy event. I defeated the goblin army, uh, which meant that I could now find a goblin tinkerer down in the caves, uh, which was the most important part. I then went exploring some more floating islands, and I found a star fury. The next floating island however, I found the fledging wings, which gave me great mobility. I then decided it was finally time to enter the lab above my house, and I found this weird hologram. And of course I had to steal him and take him back to my base. This is also when I found a chest containing lots of data components it seemed like. I didn't know what any of these things did, uh, but I just stole them all. Eventually I had to expand my base because I had so much stuff. I also started working on this garden to help me make potions further on. Eventually I was done with that and I made my way back to the crimson. So on day 12, I finally killed the Brain of Cthulhu. I wanted to see if he dropped some other items as well, so I killed him once again. I could now craft a bunch of crimtain bars which I could use to make a full set of armor. I had gotten so much crimtain in fact that I could switch out all of my tools. I explored a bit on the left side of the world and eventually I stumbled across this meteor that had crashed. I figured I could start preparing a little bit for the skeleton fight, so that's what I did on the end of day 13. And as I was working on that, out of the blue King Slime spawned, so I had to take care of him. It was a pretty simple fight until the ruby in King Slime's crown started shooting lasers at me. Even though I was a bit surprised by that mechanic, the boss fight itself was still pretty simple. And just for fun I tried to summon Skeletron. Uh, 
for a moment I actually thought I was able to kill him, uh, but then his arm spawned back and I pretty much gave up. Once again, I tried to summon the Perforator Hive, and I actually almost managed to kill him, uh, but not quite. I was now working towards getting molten armor so I needed obsidian and whilst doing that I stumbled across the goblin tinkerer. This was great because now I could buy the rocket boots as well as combine many of my accessories. Right away I placed down the workshop and I combined the rocket boots with my Hermes boots. Then I could combine the spectre boots with the aglet and the anklet in order to craft the lightning boots. I could also combine some other accessories and craft the cloud and the balloon. I could then use that and combine it with the lucky horseshoe to craft a blue horseshoe balloon. I then headed to the ice biome in order to find the ice skates, which I luckily found. And finally I could combine the ice skates with the lightning boots in order to craft the frost spark boots. On day 15 it was time to craft the molten armor, so I made a bunch of obsidian skin potions and headed down to hell. I then killed this demon and I didn't notice that he had a guide, so I spawned the wall of flesh, but I died. I returned right after to go down and pick up a hellforge. Placing down the Hellforge, I was now able to craft Hellstone Bars. Since I had gotten so much Hellstone Bar, I could make myself a Molten Armor right away. As well as crafting myself a full set of Molten Armor, I crafted myself a Fiery Greatsword, a Molten Pickaxe, as well as a Summoning Staff. I then returned to the old man to try and beat Skeletron. The fight itself was going somewhat okay, but it took so long that eventually it became daytime and Skeletron enraged. Since I was just waiting for nighttime, I did some more work on the house. And eventually I could return to the old man and fight Skeletron. So after a very long fight I finally managed to kill him. I returned back home and placed down his trophy before I eventually made my way back into the dungeon. I think I was fairly lucky as the very first chest I opened I found a cobalt shield. While making my way through the dungeon, I got a few random items such as this staff. Eventually I died, uh, but when I got back home I made myself an obsidian skull and combined it with my cobalt shield. I then headed back to the giant beehive I had found on day 5 in order to fight Queen Bee.
The fight itself was pretty uninteresting and easy. I had run out of bullets so I had to use my wooden arrows which made the fight take way longer than needed, but eventually I did kill her. I returned back down to hell to open some of the shadow chests and this is where I found a new pet. My minion then managed to kill a demon which then summoned the wall of flesh. I made my way back into the dungeon in order to find a bewitching table but I did find some other weapons on the way as well. I explored a little bit further and then I came across this massive room in the end of the dungeon. When I returned home I did some more work in the house like adding new rooms for the NPCs. While still working on a base, I got the message that the blood moon was rising. I continued on day 20 by working a bit on the house. Eventually I made my way back down to hell in order to start working on the arena for the wall of flesh fight. And when I almost reached the end of the left side of the world I stumbled across this new biome. It was full of these plants that I couldn't mine and these weird structures and eventually I died. It was then time to start thinking about killing the wall of flesh, and this was definitely a challenge. I did absolutely not have enough DPS in order to fight this boss, so eventually I just ran out of space. After dying I headed to the crimson in order to make the summoning item for the slime god. I expanded the arena and eventually I summoned him. When fighting new bosses it always takes some time to learn their mechanics and the way they attack. Uh, so yeah, eventually I died. However, that didn't stop me, so I summoned them again. For each time I tried to kill him, I got his HP down just a little bit more. I then went back to hell to try and kill the wall of flesh, but that didn't turn out as planned. So I headed back to the crimson to try and kill the perforator hive. And just like that, I managed to kill the perforator mine. And this also gave me the message that the sky is now glittering with cyan light. I then made my way back up to the floating islands and now I could mine the ores that I previously couldn't.
Now, with this newfound aerolite ores, I can make a ton of aerolite bars. Now, by placing down a sky mill, uh, it enabled me to craft some new gear. Now, I could also make this broken biome blade, which would come in really handy. At first though, I didn't really know how to get it to work, so I just thought I'd made a broken blade. But, as you can see, I was quickly proven otherwise. I could also make a new pair of wings, which made my mobility even better. Now, with this new biome blade, I could absorb the power of different biomes and give the weapon new attacks. I then went ahead and crafted a full set of aerialite armor. With my new wings and armor, I once again tried to summon the slime god. Eventually I got tired of dying to the slime god, so I went back to the base to expand it. I also made a bunch of mannequins in order to display my previous armor sets. I also crafted this demon conch that pretty much worked like a magic mirror, only it teleported me down to hell. I then tried to kill the slime god a couple of more times, but I died. Eventually, I went down to hell to try and kill the wall of flesh, but I died. Eventually, I took a break from dying, and I explored all the way to the left side of the world down in the abyss, and I found this strange orb. I went back to this biome that I previously found, and when I tried to enter the lab, this boss bar showed up. I then checked my map and saw that there was a giant clam chilling in the water. I eventually made my way over to it and started attacking it, and it didn't really do much. And it didn't take very long before the giant clam was dead. I also spawned a new NPC called Amidias. I then wanted to try like a new tactic that I had in mind uh, to kill the slime god, but spoiler alert, it didn't really work. So as you can see the tactic was just making a big box and using a water bolt so all the bolts would be kept inside of the box, uh, but yeah. So finally, on day 29, I managed to kill the slime god.
Alright, so I also got the electrolyte gel pack. Uh, this item increased my adrenaline damage by 15%, which is pretty good. I could also make this gel workbench, uh, which I can use in order to make items out of gel, like the armor I'm equipping right now. I decided to kill the slime god a couple more times just to see if he dropped anything else, and he did drop an item called the overloaded blaster, which was pretty good. With my new armor and my new weapon, I tried once again to kill the wall of flesh. Since the overloaded blaster used gel as ammunition, I had to summon King Slime a bunch of time just to farm gel. Eventually I bought the counter scarf accessory from one of the NPCs, and this item allowed me to dodge much easier. At this point as well I just farmed King Slime a ton in order to supply my weapon. And at this point I was just so angry because I was almost managing to kill him, uh, but just kept on dying. And eventually, things took a turn. And there you go, the wall of flesh was now beaten, and the world was now blessed with cobalt and palladium. I also heard this huge rumbling in the background which made me kinda scared for the future. Returning back home however, I placed on the wall of flesh trophy and I opened the treasure bag. This gave me the demon heart which increases my accessory slot by one. And it didn't take very long before I got the message that the pirates had arrived. I had also gotten this huge breaker blade from the wall of flesh, as well as the meow thrower, which just sounded horrible. Eventually there spawned a flying dutchman, and he actually got stuck in my huge box, so I kinda just abused my situation right here. This one however didn't really drop anything interesting apart from his trophy. The rest of the invasion was pretty uneventful and eventually I beat them. I did some more work on the house, like expanding the NPC housing. Now, I'm not a good builder or anything, uh, but I tried to experiment by using some different backgrounds here and there. I went and explored a bit uh, to the left side of the world and eventually I stumbled upon this meteor or star that I landed. However, I couldn't mine it with my pickaxe. I kept going towards the left side until I found the hallowed biome. I went down in the crimson biome to ruin the altars, and usually this spawns new ore in the world, but instead it just gave me a ton of souls of night. After this, I went down in the caves to mine some cobalt. I then destroyed this mimic which dropped a lot of accessories like the titan glove. After a bit of exploring, I eventually found the wizard. I bought this one accessory from him, which basically just spawned in a lot of characters from Howl's Moving Castle. With the titan glove I just got, I could make the power glove. I also made a bunch of cobalt bars which I can use to make a new drill. With this new drill I could go and mine palladium ore. I could then make a bunch of palladium bars which I can use to make a new drill as well as a full set of armor. I was down in the hallowed ice caves when I killed this mob which dropped the ice chunk which was basically a new summoning weapon. I then made a cryo key which I could then use in order to summon a new boss cryogen. I didn't make any preparations before the fight, I just wanted to see how the boss functioned, uh, so eventually I died. I then went ahead and crafted the summons for two of the mechanical bosses. I then started making my way down to the jungle in order to get some life fruits. I also got this die from a strange plant, so I put them on my armor. I then went ahead and summoned the destroyer, uh, which I thought was going to be a fairly easy fight.
I summoned him a couple of times because I knew I should have been able to kill him. I kept dying a lot, uh, but I just continued to summon him. And after a couple of tries, the destroyer was finally killed. I also got the message that a couple of new ores had spawned in the world. The very same night, I tried to spawn Skeleton Prime, but it didn't really go as planned. The fight took way too long and eventually he enraged because of the daytime. Day 38 I returned to the caves and I found a new ore called Orcalacum or something. I then made a ton of bars and with these bars I could make a new upgraded anvil. I also went ahead and upgraded my drill. I went back deep into the jungle once again to find more life fruit. I then stumbled upon the stone golem which I killed and I took his head. I then got the biggest jump scare when I, all of a sudden I saw this huge earth elemental. Luckily for me though, it wasn't too hard to kill. And using my full brain capacity, I lured him onto this dynamite. Eventually I killed him and the weapon he dropped wasn't anything good. Oh, and of course, I found Waldo. One of the new ores that spawned as well was the mithril ore, so I went ahead and mined a lot of that. I also made myself a full set of mithril armor, uh, which came in pretty handy. After dying I went over to the astral biome and summoned this boss, uh, but I was absolutely not ready for this. Once again I tried to summon Cryogen, but that didn't really work either. I had managed to get myself an ice feather for one of the mobs I killed in the ice biome, uh, so I made myself some ice wings. And the night of day 40 I summoned Skeleton Prime once again. And just like that, Skeleton Prime was now killed. This meant that two new ores spawned in the world, which were Adamantite and Titanium. I then placed down the trophy and headed down for the mines in order to get some Titanium. I got a ton of Titanium, as well as some Adamantite, and I also found a strange plant, which I used and got some reflective silver dye, which I put on my armor. Since I couldn't use titanium and adamantite on my previous furnace, I had to upgrade it to an adamantite forge. With these new bars, I made myself an adamantite drill, as well as a full set of titanium armor. I also upgraded my scarf accessory uh, to the evasion scarf. And it was now time to kill the twins, which was the last and final mechanical boss.
My first attempt didn't really go as planned, uh, and I died. And in fact, my second attempt didn't really go as planned either. On day 42, I was invaded once again by the pirates. Luckily for me though, the Flying Dutchman actually dropped something useful this time, uh, which was the black spot. While waiting for night time, I just did some more work on the base. So when it was finally night time once again, I summoned the twins. And just like that, all the mechanical bosses were now killed. I opened the treasure bags and got a bunch of hallowed bars as well as some souls. And I can also make a mechanical cart which I could make from all the pieces from the mechanical bosses. Killing the final boss also meant that I could make the biome blade which is a huge upgrade. And as you can see, this blade just had a potential to destroy. I also made this ponage hammer, which just had insane melee DPS. I also upgraded my power glove to the mechanical glove, which was a pretty nice upgrade. I also found out just how cool the effect from the actual biome was with the biome blade. I hadn't made the knight's edge yet, so I headed to the crimson and made that. I could then combine that with the souls I gotten and made a true knight's edge. I also went around to different biomes to see which effects I can get with my sword. Eventually I prepared myself to fight Cryogen once again. And without too much trouble, I managed to kill him. He had some interesting uh, drops like the frozen key, uh, but he also spawned this new NPC called Permafrost. I had ran out of space to place my trophy, so I just put it down somewhere. I then opened the treasure chest and I got a couple of nice accessories. One of which was this one that created a frost shield around me. After defeating Cryogen, there spawned this new ore called Cryonic Ore within the underground ice biome. I then turned the ores into bars and made this Flare Frost Blade, which really wasn't that useful. And for every reason, I defeated the Perforator Hive once again, and I don't really know why. Either way, I headed to the jungle and found some more life fruit. I then found this plantera bulb and I actually decided to give it a go and try and kill her. 
And of course, trying to fight the boss in a crammed area such as this can't go my way. I return to the jungle to find the last pieces of life fruit. On day 47 I got the message that a solar eclipse was happening. I was making my way towards the brimstone crag when I found this hallowed mimic which dropped the illuminant hook. I made my way over there and uh, I got this new ore which I could use in order to create unholy cores. I also pimped out one of the rooms with the loot I've gotten from the pirate invasions. However, with these unholy cores that I just made, I could make myself the charred idol which summoned a new boss. This boss was called the Brimstone Elemental and it was definitely a challenging one. And as if dying multiple times wasn't enough torture, I also managed to misclick and teleport myself away from the boss, not once, but twice. After dying a couple of more times, I decided that the arena was too small and I had to make it bigger. And after a couple of more preparations, I was ready for the boss fight. So after many many deaths, the Brimstone Elemental was finally defeated. One of the items that I got summoned a small Brimstone Elemental to fight for me. It was then time to start making some more preparations to the Plantera fight. I tried to summon a boss but I moved too quickly away and the boss despawned. Thankfully, there was another bulb not so far away. And the biggest noob moment during this whole 100 days video was forgetting to make a Drax so that I can mine Chlorophyte. Either way, when I got back home, I expanded the trophy room. I also made this little garden hut outside of my house. I then made this item that summoned a new boss called the Calamitous Clone. And once again I just went in blind to try and learn the mechanics of the boss fight. And this naturally included me dying a lot. Finally I remembered that I could now make the Drax so I made my way back into the jungle. As you can see I mined a ton of chlorophyte ores and eventually I made my way back home and I turned these ores into bars and with these bars I made myself a full set of turtle armor. I then bought this lawnmower from the golfer which was just insane. While mowing my lawn I saw that the corruption was closing in on my house so I put an end to it by digging this huge gap. I also went ahead and killed the destroyer a couple times just in order to get some more hallowed bars. One of the times however he absolutely massacred my entire town.
With this new hallowed bars I got, I crafted the Excalibur and combined that with the Chlorophyte bars and created the true Excalibur. Eventually I summoned Calamitous clone once again to try and kill him. And just before I died, I managed to kill him. He then dropped the broken hero sword, which I could then use in order to craft the tarot blade. I opened the treasure bag and he dropped a ton of loot. One of the most important pieces of loot he dropped was this hood of calamity, which uh, looked pretty good. Luckily for me, he also dropped some useful items like the Void of Calamity which increased my damage. He also dropped some ashes which I can use in order to craft his sword. Instead of trying to navigate the jungle all the time to try and find Plantera's Bulb, I created this item called the Planta Bulb uh, which I can use to summon the boss anytime I wanted. With the new sword I made, the boss fight seemed to go a lot better, however I still didn't quite manage to kill the boss. Just like with the brimstone elemental boss fight, uh, I thought the arena was way too small, so I found some dynamite in order to widen it. I kept trying, but Plantarius still kept killing me. After dying a couple of times, I visited the steampunk NPC and bought the momentum capacitator. This item made traveling the world so much quicker. And as you can see, I died many, many times before I managed to kill Plantera. And eventually I managed to kill Plantera on the first try. I also guess it's safe to say that I was pretty happy. Plantera dropped a couple of interesting items, uh, but most importantly it dropped one of the components for the Tarot Blade. I then went ahead and upgraded some of my tools, like the hammer for example, which was still Crimtain. After killing Plantera, there also spawned this new ore called Perennial or Perennial Ore or something like that. So I mined a ton of that and made a bunch of bars. I can then combine these bars with the Fiery Greatsword and create this huge weapon. 
Another thing that happens after you defeat the Plantera is that the dungeon gets new enemies which drops new items. When exploring in the dungeon all of a sudden I got this message that this creature had awoken. Uh, I managed to kill him but I don't think he dropped anything special. I then found this paladin which I managed to take down after a while and he dropped his shield. Uh, by using the ectoplasm I got from some of the creatures down in the dungeon I can now craft some new items. I then crafted this new Arrow Blade which looked uh, pretty, pretty good. I also tried to summon a new boss called Ashtrum something, uh, but it didn't go quite as planned of course. I also managed to get killed by the giant clown. It was now time to start upgrading some of my accessories so I started with the frost spark boots. I then crafted the lava waders which I could combine with my boots in order to craft the terra spark boots. I also had enough items to upgrade them even further to the angel threads. I then started working on converting one of the floating islands into a mushroom biome and I do this in order to get the new truffle NPC. Also since I had gotten so many new armor sets I made a bunch of mannequins in order to put them all on display. When I was finished with that, I made my way back to the jungle temple which I can now unlock with the key I got from Plantera. This temple was absolutely filled with traps so I had to be careful when exploring. Eventually I found the last room where I soon would defeat my next boss. Before killing the boss however, I tried to clear the room of all its traps, but this was clearly much harder than I thought it would be. Eventually the room was safe and I can now summon the golem. Even though this boss should be relatively easy, it still took a couple of tries before I had it. However, on my way back I got the message that the blood moon was rising. This meant that some of the mobs could drop blood orbs which I can use in order to create the blood orange. And this item was very nice because it permanently increased my HP by 25. And directly after the blood moon had passed, a solar eclipse happened, but I didn't have time for that so I returned to the jungle temple. And just like that, the golem had now been defeated. I returned back home and placed down the trophy. I could also see that he had dropped me a new summoning weapon. Since the place was getting pretty cramped, I decided to expand it a bit. I also used this new pickaxe that I got from the golem. The golem also dropped some beetle husks which I could use in order to upgrade my armor to the beetle armor. I also finished decorating the new extension to the base. I then planned on exploring down in the abyss so I grabbed a bunch of potions and drank them and eventually I went down. When I went deep enough all of a sudden I found this new ore called the scoria ore. I grabbed as much ore as I possibly could before eventually drowning. Returning back home I turned all of the ores into bars. 
I also created this accessory called the Abaddon, which is a key component uh, when upgrading the Void of Calamity accessory I already have. However, I needed a couple of more accessories, so I had to kill the Brimstone Elemental a couple of more times. I died a couple of times before eventually managing to kill her, but once I got it down, it was pretty easy. I didn't get the items that I needed right away, so I just kept summoning her. Eventually I got the item that I needed which was the Gehenna, so I returned back home. I then needed a magma stone which only dropped from hellfire bats, and eventually I got one but it did take some time. Eventually I had all the components in order to craft the void of extinction. I then went ahead and crafted some of these life alloys which I can use in order to craft the miracle fruit. This item also increased my maximum health by 25. When out exploring I stumbled across this Martian probe, which flew away, triggering the Martian Madness event. Eventually the Martian Saucer spawned, and after a little battle I managed to kill him. When I managed to kill him, he dropped a couple of items, uh, but the only interesting one was the cosmic car keys. I killed another saucer, and uh, again, it didn't really drop anything too interesting, and eventually the Martian Madness event was over. After this, I made my way back to the dungeon, and summoned the lunatic cultist. So, with the lunatic cultists defeated, the celestial pillars now spawned in the world. I placed down the trophy, but I also needed some more room for the ancient manipulator, which I placed underneath the other room. I added some details to the room, and I think it turned out pretty good. I went outside, and I stumbled upon the first pillar. I died of course a couple of times, but eventually I did manage to take down the shield. The next pillar was the ranged pillar, and I don't know if this is normal, but there spawned like a thousand of these mobs. I headed over to the solar pillar and started clearing out there.
When clearing out the pillars, the enemies drop this material I can use in order to craft this entropic claymore. I also made a solar eruption and then I returned back to the pillars. I killed the nebula pillar before returning back to the final one. After killing the final pillar, I got the message that impending doom was now approaching. I tried my best but my movement was all over the place and eventually I died. I created a celestial sigil which meant that I can now summon the moon lord whenever I wanted. I also made a ton of asphalt blocks in order to make the arena better. I visited the jungle again uh, which had now been affected by some kind of plague. This meant that there spawned some new mobs which dropped some materials I can use in order to craft a new boss summoning item. I went ahead and crafted a summoning item and returned to the jungle where I eventually spawned the plague bringing Goliath. This boss fight reminded me a lot of the queen bee as it seemed to have a lot of the same movement and mechanics, however of course it was much harder. After dying, I talked to some of the NPCs back home and the zoologist actually sold me a digging mole car. I hadn't really tried to make rails before, but this one just automatically dug through the ground. And it was safe to say I spent a little bit too much time playing around with this. <laughs> I tried a couple of more times to kill the plague bringer, uh, but eventually I took a break and returned to the astral biome. I forgot to check the time however before starting the boss, so after a little while the boss enraged. I also crafted this new boss summoning item, uh, which summoned the ravenger. And this boss was just absolutely terrible. After giving up on this boss, I returned to the astral biome. I almost managed to kill him a couple of times, so I definitely knew it was possible. Since I couldn't fight the Astrum or Rias boss during the daytime, I headed back to the Ravenger. And this is pretty much how the days went of me trying to fight these three bosses. I was just absolutely sick of dying so much, so I headed over to the ocean to try and fight Duke Fishron. Both the first and the second phase of this boss went pretty okay, it was just that the final phase was absolutely chaotic.
While fighting, I also got the message that the truffle NPC had now moved in. I headed over to greet him and I bought the auto hammer, which I can use in order to craft shroom at bars. I headed back to Duke Fish Run, but I just wasn't strong enough to kill him. So after dying a couple of times, I headed home and I made myself a full set of hypothermic armor. I put my old armor up for display before returning to the ocean to try and fight the Duke Fish one. Since I couldn't manage to kill him, I returned to the Astral Biome in order to fight Astro Marius. Now, I don't know if I'm just good or it was this new armor, but eventually I managed to kill him. I placed down the trophy and opened the treasure bag like usual, and I got some pretty interesting items, like this cool mount. I also got this starlight fuel cell, which increased my adrenaline damage by 15%. After gaining some extra confidence, I headed back to the jungle to try and defeat the Plaguebringer Goliath. And as usual, I died a bunch, but after a while, I kinda got a hang of the mechanics. And as you can see I died many many times as you can see by the graveyard biome forming down here, but eventually I managed to kill it. It was then time to start thinking about returning to the ocean in order to fight the Duke Fishron.
And as you can see, I was so close to dying, but eventually I did manage to kill him. I opened a treasure bag and got a couple of nice items, such as the wings and a new mount. I tried to summon the Ravenger boss once again to see if my luck's changed, uh, but it didn't and I eventually I died. I then figured it was about time to find the next boss, uh, which was in the ocean, and at first I went to the wrong side of the ocean, so I made my way back to the opposite side of the world, and eventually I found something strange at the bottom of the ocean. We really just need to take a second and appreciate the music in Calamity Man. Uh, but anyways, I placed down the trophy and I opened the treasure bag. I then returned to the astral biome to see if I was now able to kill the second boss from the astral biome. I figured that the biome was too small to fight in, so I bought this contaminator as well as some astral solution uh, in order to expand the biome. So just like this, I could just expand everything. So in the next couple of days, I just did a bit of everything. I tried to kill the moon lord, for example, but died a couple of times. I figured that it was long overdue that I upgraded my mechanical glove, uh, which meant I had to get another magma stone from hell. And I stood here for a very long time and I didn't see that there was a magma stone just lying right beside me. I also traveled deep in the abyss once more in order to get some more scory ore, uh, but eventually I died from the pressure. I could then upgrade my mechanical gloves to fire gauntlets. I tried to kill the Asheville boss a couple more times, but I just got absolutely obliterated. I also figured it was a long overdue that I upgraded my obsidian shield, so I went ahead and crafted all the accessories in order to craft the Ankh shield. Eventually I had all the components necessary in order to craft the Ankh charm, uh, which I could then use to combine with the obsidian shield to craft the Ankh shield. I took it one step further and crafted the Ornate shield. I also crafted some sea remains which I could then use in order to craft the shield of the ocean. Combining all of these shields together with the core of calamity I could now craft myself Asgard's Valor. I then returned back to the astral biome to try and fight the boss once again.
I crafted a daybreak at the ancient manipulator because I figured it was now time to take the moon lord. Even though I died a lot, I felt like my fighting was improving, uh, so eventually I expanded the arena a bit more. I then went fishing in the hallowed biome in order to get some prismite. With the prismite fish, I could combine it and craft some life force potions that increased my health by 20%. I also got a bunch of junk from the crates I'd gotten while fishing. So I went ahead and crafted a bunch of these potions, and eventually I summoned the Moon Lord once again. When fighting, I sometimes crashed right into this floating island, so I just decided to blow it all up. And just like that, on day 94, the Moon Lord was officially dead. After killing the Moon Lord, the chat was just absolutely filled with cosmic terror warnings and shrieks of echoes and so and so. When I opened the treasure bag I got a ton of useful items, one of these being the Celestial Starboard as well as the new Lightning Pet. I then made my way down to the Ancient Manipulator and crafted a ton of Luminite Bars. With these bars I could now upgrade my shoes to the Seraph Tracers. And these boots were just absolutely amazing and I could immediately replace them with the Celestial Starboard. I then went ahead and crafted this Genesis pickaxe, which just had an insane range. And as you can see, the mobility with these boots were just insane. I'd also gotten this Celestial Onion, which increased my accessory slot by 1. I returned to the skies once more, and I could see that there were some new floating islands that had spawned. I started mining it and it gave me this new ore which I hadn't seen before. Eventually I made my way into the core which gave me tons of luminite ore. I scouted around the map and saw that there were many of these new floating islands that had spawned.
My plan was then just to enter the dungeon, but I managed to kill every single cultist, so I guess I just had to kill the cultist leader. So after defeating the cultist leader, I made my way down into the dungeon and opened the desert chest. The mobs also dropped a new material now called the Phantoplasma. So I stuck around for a bit and farmed some of that. When I returned back home, I created a bunch of shroomite bars because I wanted to make the drill containment unit mount. Since I really hadn't mined any meteorite earlier on, I had to go and actually do that. While working towards the drill containment unit, I also crafted this item which summoned the Dragon Folly. I also needed a bunch more chlorofact, so I went crazy and mined a lot of that. I needed some more hellstone, and when I returned to hell I was surprised to find some new mobs here. Eventually I managed to kill him and he dropped this unholy essence. I also headed back to the dungeon as I needed more ectoplasm uh, when I got this weird message. And just like that I could make myself the drill containment unit. And you can just see how insanely effective this mount is. For the rest of the days in this challenge, I tried to go back and kill some of the bosses that I hadn't managed to kill earlier on. And unfortunately, as you can see, I did have big trouble killing these bosses. I then headed to the jungle to use the new summoning item that I made uh, that summoned the dragon folly. I truly believe that with a couple more tries I could have been able to kill the boss, but unfortunately this was the end of the 100 days challenge. And there you have it, 100 days of Terraria Calamity mod. If you want to see part 2 for this series, make sure to like the video, let me know in the comments, and maybe consider subscribing.